all praises to Yahweh, Mahashem, Yahweh Shai, double honors to Apostle and Elders in New York, GMS. Salat. Citations to you all around the world that's teaching the truth. My name is Maya Ka'al Bungad, which I call a branch of Great Millstone. I'd like to make a disclaimer that we're not black Hebrew Israelites. We are Israelites. The Israelites are the so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And speck of birds scattered abroad. Speck of birds are Israelites who look like other nations, but their paternal bloodline go back to the 12 tribes of Israel. Again, black is a color, not a nationality. We are not fitted with any black uh any black extreme groups. All right, we're not fitted with any extreme groups. We're not fitted with any Islamic groups. We're not fitted with any other Islamic groups. All right. All right, man. So you know, I had a scoffer. Uh, <laughs> she basically, uh, my name is Angel Simon. All right, and she told me that the Moors wasn't our people that the Moors uh, love white women and they enslave black women. <laughs> it was just told the opposite, man. All right, all Moors didn't enslave everybody, man. All right. All Moors didn't like white folks, so-called white people, all right, Edomites, all right. <clears throat> okay. So just get that myth, man. And and every twelve tribes of Israel, you got you got Jake that was wicked. You got Jake that was that was, uh, that was righteous, man. They ain't, they ain't lift an arm to their people, man. You know, because over here in uh, in America along the East Coast, man, you had um, um you had um some Gadites, so called Native America, man. They beating up the other tribes and, and sell them off to Esau, man. And then, like in the, in the southwest southwestern uh, United States, you had the uh, Comanches, man, and they and the Comanches was rolling, man. They was rolling like the uh, the Huguenots, and the Huguenots was the Moors and uh, crypto Jews that set up uh, all these these slave ports on the East Coast of America, man. The Esau betrayed them and slayed them alongside with their uh, their Gadai brethren, man. So called Native American brother, man. But you know, the Comanches, man, they were rolling, man. They would sell, they beat up and sell their own brothers, man, the southwestern, um, southwestern United States, man. All right, and I'm gonna bring, bring that out, man. All right, you know, so yeah, the, the Moors, uh, majority of Moors, those, those were Israelites, man, that ruled Spain, Portugal, France, and so on, man. And, um, it had to be, um, 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 um Abolitionist named Robert Purvis. You know, I brought this out before, but since the spirit had uh, popped this article up, you know, I'm gonna bring this out again, man. You know, all right, after I uh, uh, cut that scoffer, all right, and this is uh, Yabilati News, all right, uh, about the abolition Robert Purvis, all right. Um, Robert Purvis, American 19th century abolitionist, and his Moroccan grandmother, Ditto. All right, or Dido. All right. Robert Purvis was one of the most committed American abolitionists in the 19th century. The activist drew strength from the story of his grandmother, a Moroccan woman who was enslaved and transported to the United States at age 12. Now you got our people in, in um, uh, well, you got um, people uh, um, in Morocco, they like to say, um, uh, no, that's not true. They had the Treaty of Friendship and this and this and that and this and that. Look, man, Esau never kept his promise, man. He known to break break treaties, man. Talking to our people in uh, Morocco and though in, in the, um, and some of some of some of the you know the uh, talking to the Israelites and uh, and the Amazigh in uh, Morocco, man. You know, even though Amazigh not, um, you know, not our people, but they live in Morocco, right? But based on talking to the people in Morocco, people that live in Morocco, man. Um, um, Esau broke trees, man. All right, he didn't care, man. When it, when he broke so many trees with the uh, Lord and uh, so-called Native American tribe of Gad, all right. It says right here, Psalms uh, 55 and 21. 
me get right here. Let's go to 20. It says, well, Psalms 55 and 20. He have put forth his hand against such as he be at peace with him, have broken his covenant, which he did in history. He saw so called white man. That's why the truck, the world's in turmoil today. Everybody hates him. All right. It says, Psalm 55 and 21, the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softened at all, yet were they drawn swords. And this is this is the memo of the so-called white man Esau around in history. There is plenty of historical accounts where Esau had broken his promise with other nations throughout the world. All right. So, yes, there were captives, prisoner wars that was coming from Morocco. All right, and also coming from um, 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 Spain early that in the fifteenth century, in the early sixteenth century, that is a fact. All right. So it says um, he was one of the most prominent abolition in the United States in the nineteenth century, but the story of his family was the major factors that influenced his career achievements and work for the. African American community, all right, the, the tribe of Judah, all right, and I know African American is named after two, two Edomites, two so called Europeans, all right. It says, um, Robert Purvis, all right, born 1810, died in 1898, was born in Charleston, South Carolina, to a mixed race parent. Ain't no sense to admit, right? You are the seat of your father, all right. His mother was a free woman of color, and his father was a British immigrant. All right, and he could have been a a, a, a Jake man. That's why he's so passionate, man. Because original British, those were uh, those were Israelites. All right, the uh, the British Moors. Okay. All right, that's why you see he's so passionate about being abolition with Jake, man. All right, it said his maternal. As I say, you don't judge by skin color, man. All right, it said his maternal grandparents, however, had an interesting story to tell. While he spent most of his life fighting against slavery, his maternal grandmother was a Moroccan freeborn woman who was taken as a slave to the United States. All right, it said the ordeal of Moroccan slave. It said the account, which Robert Purse repeated several times, <laughs> all right, suggests that I love just laughing because you got to repeat, man. You got to repeat. Because you how all throughout the scriptures, throughout throughout the Bible, he got repeat things onto Israel, man, and also to the heathens. All right, to get through their thick, thick skull heads, man. All right, it said the account which Robert Paris repeated several times suggests that his maternal grandmother, um, Dido uh, Badaraka, was born in Morocco, wrote Margaret Holt Bacon in her book, But Once Raised the Life of Robert Purvis. All right. The historian recalls that at the age of 12, Dido was captured by a slave trader along with an Arab girl. All right, the two girls had been lured to a mile or two out of the city where they lived to see a deer that had been caught before they was captured. They were seized, bound, placed on the backs of camels, uh, and carried to a slave market on the coast of Morocco, Bacon wrote. Herbert's grandmother was loaded onto a ship and transported to Charleston in 1766. All right. So there you go, man. She was on those slave ships. All right. That's a prophecy. All right. Get that out uh, to around the 28. All right. So she fulfilled. Uh, get it right here. She fulfilled two prophecies. Well, a lot of prophecies in the book. I'm going to get to the main prophecies. It says, Deuteronomy 28, 32. It said, Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all day long. And there shall be no might in thy hand. There was no might in thy, in, in thy old parents' hand. All right? She got snatched up from Morocco, taken to the Americas. All right? It says, well, Deuteronomy 20, uh, I'm going to get this. Deuteronomy 24. Yeah, Therefore thou shalt serve thy enemies. Yahweh shall sin against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in one of all things. And he shall put a yoke or iron upon thy neck until he destroyed thee. All right. So you got, you got, you got, put up, you got a yoke or iron upon thy neck, man. All right. It says, uh, let me get right here. Uh, 
what else? Sorry, it's because she was scattered on the other side of the world. It said, do it on the uh, 28 and 64. It said, your house shall scatter there among all people from one end of the earth, even unto the other, and dare thou shall serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone. Right? Our people scatter all the earth, and they serve all these different philosophies, man, outside the truth, right? You know, Christianity, Islam, and so on, so on, right? And right here, Deuteronomy 28, it says, saying, Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again by ships. All right? So we go into captivity again also, uh, in um, America's Egypt, spiritually known as Egypt, Revelation 11 and 8. All right? Egypt's men in bondage, Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 6. All right? Okay? And it's, the, it's the double folded. All right? It's talking about bondage and it's talking about America. All right? Because I can tell you the the so called uh, the, the so called Negroes uh, was brought to Jamaica. That's not America. All right. So this this prophecy double fold. All right. And the first time we was in, in uh, as a nation, we was actually in Egypt, in Africa. All right. But this is a future prophecy. All right. It says, by the way, where if I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Talking about, as a whole nation, we should see um, the whole. The, our land Israel man all right we was in the borders man when when Dido was kidnapped from Morocco man she wasn't that far from Israel all right there you should be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bond right so yeah how gave us up unto the these other nations man and that's what happened to Dido all right it says what it says uh for bondmen and bond women all right so we she end up on the slave auction block and no man should fight nobody should save us all right okay you know, that says right here, it says, um, all right, it says, uh, let me get right back here, it says, historic recalls at the age 12, Dida was captured by a slave trail along with an Arab girl. The two girls had been lured to a mile or two out of the city where they lived to see a deer that had been caught before they was captured. They were seized, bound, placed on the backs of camels, carried to a slave market on the coast of Morocco, Bacon wrote. Perber's grandmother was then loaded on a slave ship and transported to Charleston in 1766. It says the Arab girl um, that was accompanied Dido was freed in order to keep peace with the barbarian pirates, the old Jakes, man. All right. So somebody knew. Uh, somebody knew who who she was and it would call it would cause all types of hell all right all right <clears throat> it says however dido was kept and sold to a woman called miss harry diaz the latter educated a moroccan slave treated her as companion and left instruction that she was to be free and given a now to us sixty dollars when miss diaz died all right so that was a big that was a lot of money back then all right, and that happened. You know, some Jakes they came in America, man. They got um, you know, they got freed in the in the wild, man. They they actually goes with uh, uh seven years of uh, um that law where you uh the Hebrew law. This is you got your slave served seven years. You got to let them go, man. All right. So I got to look at Miss Harry Diaz. All right. All right, we look look into her background, man. All right, but guess what? <laughs> Dido was still catching hell in America, man. And a lot of uh, Moors and Morano Jews they brought over from uh, Northwest Africa or other places, man. They were still, they, they and they sin still catching hell, man. All right, because <laughs> she didn't go home. All right, so after she was free, Dido married Baron Judah, a Jewish man of German descent. Together they gave birth to Perber's mother, who later married his father. An English cotton merchant. Uh, the council suggests Purvis' grandmother spent seven years enslaved while other claimed that she would never declare a free woman. All right, despite the several accounts surrounding the life of Moroccan grandma, Purvis had grown connected to her background, according to Friends Journal. The abolition, Miss Paradise, you know, such a Miss Paradise, shaped his life idea. Although he's a light skinned and frequently mistaken for white, Purvis identified with his mother and grandmother. And through them, he led a fight against slavery. All right. Okay. All right. So, you know, that's it, man. But uh, just show you, man, that uh, 
Oh uh, yes, the Moors are our people, man. All right, the Moors are are um are Israelites, man. All right, and yes, some of us got snatched from Morocco. We was getting snatched from all over the place, man. Even from the Levant, man. All right, so called Middle East. All right, so hey, I'm gonna end this and uh, shout them off. All right.